Hey guys, welcome to another video. And uh, in this video, we are going to stop the client, you know, close the client folder and get started with the server folder. That's the interesting part, to be honest. Because in client section, you're just like making the front end. Okay, I will just put this thing, put this thing, put this thing. But once we get to the server section, that's something. I mean, uh, server section is a little bit hectic, though. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, let's see. First of all, we're going to make a new user model in the. We're gonna make a new file in the model that's going to be user.js. We'll make a new schema. Schemas are just basically you're making user structures. We're gonna say constant. We're gonna import first of all mongoose. Mongoose is equal to require mongoose. I'm gonna say constant user schema is going to be equal to mongoose dot schema. Or you can say a new mongoose schema is just saying the same thing. Yeah, well, first of all, we'll have a username that's going to be of type string. It's going is required, and that's important. Required is true. Minimum character should be five, and the maximum should be fifty. We will not allow character, you know, length to be more than fifty. Then we have the password. Type should be string. Required is true. And then we will have the email. Same thing for the email. And then we will have the refresh token. It is going to be an array of uh, string. Okay. It is going to be an array which will contain the strings. We don't need anything required stuff like that. Okay. This is with the refresh token. So what is the refresh token? Basically, refresh token. This thing will store wherever the user logs in. It will store his yeah user has logged in that there and just store it here. And then I will explain you as we move further. We want the timestamps to be recorded. We're going to say timestamps true. At the end, we're going to say module.exports is going to be equal to mongoose.model with the name of users. And here we're going to put, put our user schema. So basically, if you, if you only type here user or you type here capital U, stuff like that, it all will be converted to users by default. They're lowercase all of your. Uh, 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 your whole string here and then they add a s in the end so it's just the same thing we made this thing now we will make a validation for this thing like we will make a validation in the joy valid using the joy validation that we talked before so basically we will be providing our data that joy validation before it, it will verify if our whole data match this schema now this schema will make another you know virtual schema there so it will just check that schema so I'm going to say in the validation there should be let's say let's suppose we're gonna make another folder for this thing maybe or we can just say authentication the authentication will make a register.js okay and here we're gonna have first of all input joy constant joy is equal to required joy constant register register uh, schema is going to be Joy object. We need to make a new Joy object, and here we need to say same. We, the name should be same. Okay, the name should be same. We're gonna say username should be a string type, and it's required, and its minimum should be five, and its maximum should be fifty. Then we have the password. It's going to be Joy string. It's required. There is nothing going to be like minimum or maximum. Okay. Uh, let's suppose we need a minimum of uh, minimum characters length 5. Maximum nothing. Maximum we don't care. Here we will say minimum 5. But in the database schema we will not say minimum 5 because <coughs> we actually going to hash the password and the hashed password's password just goes uh, way more bigger. Okay. We can say actually. Here we can even say minimum 5. But it won't, it won't make any sense because we're just hashing it anyway. So. Um, I was thinking to you know see how Zod works. Zod is another validator for the models, and uh, I will see about that thing very soon. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's, it's pretty same, but I saw there we have the body and the query different things, and uh, I found that interesting. I will see the next time. We need to say joy dot string. It should be type string. It is required, and another thing, it should be email. <laughs> That's the thing. Do we have a password? uppercase what thing we have pay 64 credit cards 
we actually have a lot of damn things. Domain email empty error example exists extract hello for god host name ID intensity and valid IP as so date keep length max message. Okay, we have a lot of damn things. Now I'm gonna say constant validator. It's going to be take that it's gonna take our data. Take the data. Okay, so what is this data? Where is the data coming from? So we will call this function somewhere else, wherever we need it. This is not going to be some kind of request or response. Take it is just going to be a function. Okay. So here, what's going to happen? We're going to say registration schema dot validate our data. So this thing is actually going to return us something that is called as an error. Okay. What we have two choices. We can just make it like that. We can just say a uh, constant uh, error is going to be. Let's keep it that this way. It just looks cleaner this way. I was thinking we could have made it. You know, using ternary operators, we could have made it single line without using this bracket. But it's okay. We're gonna say if error. Then I wanna say return uh, the error. I want to return the error dot details at the index zero dot message or replace all of them, all the double quotes with a sing with nothing. So basically, what I'm doing here, if we got error, that means basically if the validation failed, it will return us error. Otherwise, it's not return us anything. So basically, we're just saying if error, if error came, it means the validation failed. The error has a uh, object with the name of the details. It has an uh, it's an, uh, it has an actually array, and the first zero zero index of the the first index of the array contains an object called as name, called as message. So the message will actually show us what's the error. The password is uh, longer. The password needs to be five characters, stuff like that. But it has the double quotes also. So we'll just replace all the double quotes with nothing. So it will just remove all the double quotes. At the end, we'll say model.export is equal to validator. I'm going to copy this thing. I'm going to make new for the login.js. I'm going to paste it here. I'm going to say the same thing except in of seeing register. I'm going to say login and we don't need the username. And we don't want to show some minimum thing, okay? Because he's logging in. He's not registering a new account. We don't want to say, yeah, minimum is 5 password. Oh, I had to Oh, I'm, I was trying to brute force this account. Now I know the minimum number, minimum, minimum characters are five, so I can just uh, start from five and said <laughs> We don't want to let our hackers do those things, right? And that's okay. So yeah, that's for the login section. That's for the registration, and uh, there we go. We have created the model. So we set it up a validation in the model section. In the next video, we are going to make our registration API. Well, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be very interesting, very good. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. If you have not accessed the playlist yet, access it right now and have a nice day.